Hey, 4C Divers! Welcome to Facebook Live. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure that we know that you're here by saying hello to us in the comment section and also writing where are you listening in from? Are you here in Florida? Are you here in the United States? Maybe out of the United States. Who is tuned in and watching tonight's presentation? All right, guys. So, if you are new to the Facebook Lives, uh, my name is Nicole. I'm your social media director. Um, and uh, if you go to the website, www.force-e.com, you're going to go to the event tab and you're going to find tonight's event and you're going to want to register. Why, guys? Because if you register, you'll be put into our raffle at the end of this presentation. And we're going to be raffling off a SDI digital nitrox or enriched air nitrox um, code. So if you are not certified yet for nitrox or rich uh, air diving, we will get you the digital code so you can start learning and then you can take the class with one of our instructors. Um, and we might have a second prize to give out, but we need to see more people registering. So go to www.forcesse.com, go to the event tab, find tonight's event, it's called Fish Conservation Facebook Live. Click on it and register before 645 because that's when it cuts off. All right. So everyone say hello. You guys need to write in the comment section. Tell us hello and give us a thumbs up. Give us a smiley face or a heart emoji. Let us know that you are loving this presentation and are entertained because when we know that you guys are loving the topics, that means we're doing something right and we'll get even um, more people to do Facebook Lives for you guys. So we do appreciate the support and you guys tuning in um, every month to listen to what we have to say. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and start the presentation. And guys, this is actually one I've never done before. Um, not in the stores, we've never done it at Facebook Live because um, I wasn't really thinking about it. And then uh, my friend, uh, Lisa Micelli, the lady who does Soaked on Salt, uh, she, turned on to uh, this organization. It's called the Coastal Conservation Association Florida. And basically she told me about them and I said, wow, let's go ahead and do a Facebook Live. And Lisa said, well, let's do a paint night that kind of um, entails what they do. And so if you guys are interested, this Friday at our 4C Pompano store, we are going to be doing a paint night with Stoked on Salt, and it's going to be around 6 p.m., and then 6.30 we'll start um, painting, and it'll be um, uh, wood paintings, uh, or I'm sorry, wood carvings, and there's a mahi, or if you call it a dolphin here, um, she's got cutouts of those, and she's got cutouts of uh, lobsters, and um, basically you can paint, and they've got hooks so that you can um hang your dog leash off of them, hang, hang a rain jacket, whatever you want to do with them. But it's a really fun craft and we have a lot of fun. We like to um, play some music and drink some wine and have a good time. So if you're interested in that um, event, I will put it in the comment section. You guys can click there or again, go to that event tab on our website to get more details and sign up. All right. So let's go ahead and have Lisa. Did I say it right? You did. And thank you very much, Nicole. All right. Um, so excited. I wish I were down there to go to your paint night. That sounds like such an awesome time. <laughs> and where are you tuned in from? I'm tuned in from Sarasota, Florida. Oh, wow. Okay. So we're, you're still in Florida, but you're on the northern part. So yes, I'm on the kind of the um, I, I'm kind of central west coast, uh, just below Tampa. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, we're going to go ahead and queue up your PowerPoint. So let me uh, let me grab that for you and we'll start. Well, just to give everybody a little bit of information on uh, who I am, Captain Lisa Fitzgerald. I am uh, the CCA Florida Star Tournament Director, and I've been with CCA now as a member for over 20 years and an employee for the past eight years doing all kinds of habitat work. So if you can move through the slides, our, uh, this is just giving you an idea that there are some really great wrecks and reefs that we do and a little bit about CCA. What we do is 
the purpose behind us is public education on the conservation of our marine resources. That's to promote and enhance the availability of our coastal resources for the general public to enjoy. We're a nonprofit organization. We have over 100,000 members and 19,000 of those are in Florida. We have 19 state chapters. And that is when I say state, that's states like Louisiana, Florida, Texas. And then within Florida, we have 40 local chapters from Pensacola, Jacksonville, all the way to Key West. We support habitat restoration, protection of our marine resources, strong uh, resource-based law enforcement, and access for recreational anglers, as well as balanced rec uh, regulations to protect state and federal fish stocks. We can go to the next slide. Uh, we've enacted some really cool changes on all levels of coastal marine conservation, management, and habitat restoration, as well as water quality. We have state net bans, game fish status, uh, bycatch reduction from Gulf and Bay shrimp trawls, flounder conservation mem uh, measures, limited entry into the commercial fisheries, and then Gulf fisheries management initiatives. And we opposed uh, a proposal by NOAA to allow pelagic long lines on the Florida's East Coast, which is very important to those uh, divers over on the East Coast. We can go over to our next slide. What we do really is we initiate hundreds of different programs from initiating scientific studies on habitat, water quality, many things like that, supporting local marine law enforcement, passing pro-resource legislation, um, most recently helping to uh, get uh, vetoed Senate Bill 2508, funding marine science scholarships, initiating habitat restoration projects, fish restocking, state-of-the-art hatcheries, and then Florida's freshwater inflows from coastal bays and estuaries, as well as offshore and nearshore reefs. Next. Stock enhancement and red tide recovery has been one of the big initiatives for CCA Florida. Together with Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, uh, we released over 58,000 juvenile and adult, adult redfish on the west coast of Florida. Um, all of those are hatchery reared and donated by Duke Mariculture Center. And just so you on the east coast know, we have already started a Release the East program and have captured brood stock that is brood Hold on guys, we had some technical difficulties. Let's see if I can get Lisa back on. Don't know what happened to her. <laughs> Gotta love technology. Give us one second. Guys, you still have a few minutes if you wanna go over and register for tonight. Don't know what happened. Hopefully she'll come back on. Can anybody um, give me in the comment section that you can hear me talking? Okay. All right. Here I am. There you go. I'm back. So <laughs> I apologize for the technical difficulties. I'm not sure why we got kicked out, but maybe I said something I wasn't supposed to. Um, I. I'll go back to stock enhancement and red tide recovery. We've done 58,000 juvenile and adult redfish along the west coast of Florida and the east coast is ready. Uh, we have captured brood stock redfish from the east coast. We have spawned those fish and are growing juvenile redfish at this time and hope to be able to release the east with redfish in this coming year. 
We've also released over 5,000 juvenile snook on the West Coast and also have released nearly 20,000 spotted sea trout. So we're looking forward to helping the East Coast recover from the issues that we're having. And we're also uh, continuing to work on the West Coast. Next. We do coastal cleanups. We've had coastal cleanups throughout the entire state of Florida, cleaning more than 10 tons of garbage in some single locations. So if you have an interest in doing a coastal cleanup with your group, we're more than happy to work together with you and help initiate that. Next. We also have youth fishing clinics on the East Coast. Our next youth fishing clinic is hosted by Flagler Sport Fishing Club and will be on July the 30th in Flagler County. Um, we go and instruct youth on casting, conservation members, uh, conservation initiatives. And then we also go into the local schools and help get established elementary level um, in the elementary school elementary level fishing clubs so that they can um, have a monthly meeting and teach conservation and conservation measures in catching fish. Next, habitat restoration. Habitat restoration is the largest initiative for our organization. And we can move on to the next slide. In 2021, are, as you can see, the number of projects that were completed. We had over 41 habitat projects that were completed in the state of Florida. And as you can see, the East Coast has had quite a few habitat restoration projects from the Indian River Lagoon, offshore, near shore reefs, and we will work on that. I am very excited to say that we have done over eight million dollars in habitat restoration projects as of 2022 with the help of our partners we have leveraged the monies raised to over 8 million in habitat projects next you can see as of 2015 we had 11 projects as of two, 2021 we had over 40 projects so it's quite a, a, a big leap um, in the number of projects and efforts that we put into Habitat. And I'm hoping that is not a reflection of what is going on with the state of Florida, but we will continue to do great works. You can move on to the next slide. Here's something that can be very, very important to our diving community is the number of artificial reef deployments that CCA Florida has deployed all over the state. These artificial reefs actually almost immediately have small juvenile fish and bait fish that make the reefs their home. And then they start to grow oysters and all kinds of different fans and marine life, which then attracts larger species and fish. And they're a great diving site. You can go to our website, ccaflorida.org, and you can find all of the reef deployment coordinates on our site. Next. This is a video of one of the reefs being deployed. Hopefully we can get that to um, show here. It's a very cool video just to show you how quickly these are some of the large re, um, projects that we do. These are all ships, barges, concrete deployment. And here are all the number of boats that are out there to see these um, near shore and offshore reefs deployed. We can go to the next one. Next slide. Oh, sorry. Hold on. That's all right. <laughs> there we go. The CCA Oyster Recycling Program um, is one that is a huge program for CCA Florida. The reason that we've chosen to recycle oysters is the oyster substrate is a product that viable spat have the ability 
to attach to and can create more oyster reefs. We have tons and tons of oysters that we collect from all over the state of Florida, from different um, bars and, and establishments where they take the, the oysters, we collect them from them. We have over 90 tons of oysters to date. Those then are cured in the sun for up to six months so that there are no organisms left on them. And then they are re cycled by putting them into a biodegradable packaging or, or as you can see, loose shell and put back into areas where um, it is necessary to rebuild um, shoreline stabilization and um, offshore and near shore reefs. Some of the ones are Centipede Bay Oyster Restoration, the Indian River Lagoon, and our most recent Oyster Reef Project has been in Charlotte Harbor in Turtle Bay. You can go to the next um, slide. You can take a look at that slide and we can see the video. I will tell you, oysters can clean up to 50 gallons of water a day. So one oyster can make a huge difference in our bays and estuaries, especially the Indian River Lagoon. reef was deployed um, in Turtle Bay in Charlotte County and immediately small snook, snapper and other fish were um, making this oyster reef their home. Avid Construction actually loaded tons, I believe it was 20 tons of oyster shell on a barge. And this barge was then taken into Turtle Bay. And from the barge, we had a backhoe that actually deployed the shell into mounds around the current oyster reef that was there. This is the second deployment. It took us over three years because this was in a federal preserve in order to get the proper permitting so that we could go in and reestablish this gorgeous reef that had been decimated by weather, poor water quality, and by other boats that were anchoring on it. But as you can see, this is a lot of shell. Here is the bar. This bar used to be completely out of the water at low tide and now only one small section is out of the water at low tide. We deployed these shells all around this bar because there is still living viable oyster spat that is being released by the few, the few live oysters that are there. And these oysters will fill in the areas that you see between the mounds and will give us another beautiful oyster reef in Charlotte County in Charlotte Harbor. We can move on to the next slide. So for Habitat Highlights, that just in um, 2021, we deployed six ships. We created 22 artificial reefs. We did 6,113 tons of rock and concrete that was deployed on artificial reefs. The shoreline restoration projects was over two and a half miles. The number of oyster reefs that we deployed was over 30. We did 58 tons of recycled oyster shell that we deployed back into the water in order to establish new oyster bed and new oyster reefs. We're working with the Indian River Lagoon, and this is not an, a current number, but it's over 500,000 clams that have been deployed in the Indian River Lagoon and Sarasota Bay. We've done warning buoys for seagrasses. There's over 24. We've deployed Spartina grass and mangroves over 20,000. 
we've removed over 50 tons. That's 50 tons of garbage from the east and west coast of Florida. We've restocked 58,000 redfish, 20,000 trout, and over 5,000 snook. I do want to highlight some of the East Coast projects so that you're aware of them. We have the Kenny Chesney and CCA artificial reefs in the St. John's River system. We worked with Kenny Chesney to deploy that in 2015. In 2018, we did 15, 1,500, I'm sorry, we did 15. 1,500 tons of material on Floyd's Folly Reef, which is just two, uh, 20 miles outside of the St. John's River mouth in 70 feet of water. We did two reefs and we are working with the University of North Florida on that project. It started in 2018 and we are still continuing to uh, work on that project. We have the Lady Philomena and the Tugboat Everglades Artificial Reef. Um, which is just outside of Ponce de Leon Inlet in about 75 feet of water. We've also done a program in the Indian River Lagoon, which is helping to determine our spotted sea trout where they are by doing an acoustic study, which will resume in 2023 um, to determine how many viable um, spawning sea trout we have and we learn that through uh, full moon cycles and using microphones and hydrophones to determine where the trout are spawning and how often. We've also have deployed the Curtis Bostick Reef, which is in St. Lucie County. Um, and that is twi 12 nautical miles southeast of the Fort Pierce Inlet which is a great opportunity. That project cost over $100,000 and was supported by our Nashville CCA Music City chapter, the St. Lucie County and MMPS Environmental. We also have shoreline stabilization in Tomoka State Park, and we've done shoreline stabilization in the Indian River Lagoon, We've also done the Indian River Lagoon Clam Restoration Project, and we have released over 12 million super clams that have been deployed in the Indian River Lagoon alone. We received a grant to do that and work very closely with Blair Wiggins, Captain Blair Wiggins, to do that. Brevard County has been supporting our reef program for the last six years. We have 21 eight foot tall artificial reef modules off Brevard County, and we've deployed 63 tons of material such as um, girders, um, concrete, and other types of material. And then in 2022, we are going to re-address uh, that and start again with more um deployment of materials. The Mosquito Lagoon Oyster Restoration um, Project was in June, on June 23rd of this year, in partnership with UCF, the Marine Discovery Center, Indian River Lagoon National Estuary Program, and the National Park Services, CCA, and these organizations deployed nine oyster reefs that we restored. We did two more by using biodegradable mesh that was made from potato chip waste and recycled oyster shells from our local restaurants. We did a 1,011 square meter area where we deployed new oysters and those were 500 and five, uh, 750,000 new oysters uh, so that we can actually filter 12 million 643 759 gallons of water that will be filtered each day in the mosquito lagoon that is a huge undertaking and a great opportunity to do some water quality work starship 2 reef which is tentatively scheduled for july the 30th is about 115 acres in total size and is 
61 to 69 feet of water just off of Ponce Inlet. So that'll be another reef that we are deploying. And then again, as I mentioned, we have the Release the East program where we'll, we will be releasing 5,000 snook, 20,000 spotted sea trout, and 110,000 redfish. And we plan on releasing those 100,000 redfish um, sometime in either the late fall or early spring of 2023. So we can move on to the next slide. We have our STAR competition, which is an East and West Coast competition. It is one of the largest family-friendly fishing competitions on the, e on the East West Coast of Florida with a half a million dollars in prizes. It runs from May the 28th through September the 5th, Labor Day. There's a half a million dollars in prizes. We can go to the next slide. There's tagged redfish, tagged dolphin. There's 167 tagged redfish that have been released in the uh, coastal waters of Florida, on average four per coastal county. There are has already been one winner. If you recapture a tagged redfish and you are in the competition and a CCA member and you follow the regulations, you have the opportunity to win a brand new Pathfinder, Contender, or Spider Vapor or potentially $50,000 cash. The gentleman who caught his fish just about a week ago was in Charlotte Harbor. He was a CCA member. He was registered in the competition. He followed all the rules and he won a brand new Pathfinder with a Yamaha motor valued at over $80,000. We can move on to the next. Since 2010, our organization has taken over $850,000. It's up over a million now for 2022. And we have leveraged that to create over $8.5 million in habitat restoration projects. I apologize, this slide was not updated as of this, um, as of 2022 but it is over $8.4 million in habitat projects that CCA Florida has uh, put back into the coastal waters of Florida. So I do hope um, that if you are watching tonight, that you take the opportunity to visit our website, ccaflorida.org, and, and get yourself registered as a member, participate in the competition, and change the future of Florida's marine resources by practicing conservation, not only while you're catching fish or while you're diving. And as divers, please know you have a lionfish division in the STAR competition. So you can spear those lionfish and enter them in the competition and win some amazing prizes. Um, that goes through September the 5th. Next. So there we are. Please take a moment, go to our website. There's lots of great opportunities to get engaged with us through, as I said, our coastal cleanups, through our star competition, through uh, being a member, but also just by every day doing something that makes a difference. As you're out on the water or on a shoreline, pick up a piece of trash. If you're diving and you see a uh, fishing line wrapped on a reef, Take your dive knife, cut it free, and put it in your bag. Make sure that while you're out there on the water, you're doing something to improve the resources that you use every day. At the boat ramp, pick up trash. Instead of using a plastic water bottle, get yourself a reusable water bottle and reduce the amount of plastic that you yourself are putting back into our environment. And I believe that's all for us tonight, Nicole. Does anybody have any questions? All right, hold on, let's see. <laughs> there we are. Awesome. Okay, so let me pull up because I got the website. There's the website, everybody. 
And what she was talking about is going over here and you want to register, which I think was this one. Yep. So this first slide here to that um, register today, hit that button and that's how you guys get involved. And this is what the tag looks like, you guys. You can see it on the this fish here. That's a redfish, right? There yes, that is our redfish. There, okay. the, this year's tags are white. So you would be able to win by catching a fish that has a white tag. But if you catch a fish, this is the eighth year of the competition. If you catch a tag fish from a previous year, it is also a thousand dollar prize package from Engel Coolers. Wow, that's amazing. You know, um, and Nicole, to date, uh, the star competition has awarded over $700,000 in college scholarships to youth just for catching fish. Wow. And, um, and so a lot of people are probably going, Nicole, why did you pick, you know, to talk about like the red fish and the oyster and stuff like that? Well, guys, this is all, um, about our environment that we like to dive in. This is all interconnected. Because if we don't take care of our waterways and our fish stocks, then um, it will trickle down and get into our coral reef fish, right? And the quality that's out on the corals, uh, on the reefs um, out here in South Florida. And if you know a little bit about my background, I have been involved with a lot of different projects here in South Florida with government projects, um, non-for-profits. Um, and the biggest thing that always comes through is water quality. Guys, we can't save fish. We can't save corals. We can't save all the animals that you love to see when you're scuba diving if we don't have good water quality. So programs um, and non-for-profits like um, CCR, uh, they are the ones that we should be backing and paying attention to because um, they're also in there because they deal with fishermen. And a lot of times the fishing community, if you put a lot of pressure on them to take away something that they like to fish. They like to push back and, and say, no, no, no. So we want to try and get the fishing and the diving community to come together. And this is a great organization to do that with. So thank you so much. Well, you're um, welcome. And please, please go to our website because we do those offshore and near shore reefs. The uh, coordinates are there. We have offshore near shore reefs in South East Florida that your community can dive on and get to see what we're creating. And you're exactly right. Please remember the fish that you are seeing out on your reefs and your wrecks, oftentimes their nurseries are inshore. And mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that the mangroves and the oysters and all of the areas that fish need to have their, you know, their nurseries are healthy in order to um, have better fisheries out in, uh, in in deeper water. And we also work very hard with uh, other organizations to make sure, as I said, the long liners no longer can come into your area out there, which can cause problems if you're going out to dive and you run across one of their long lines. Mm -hmm. uh, second, secondly, we also work with the fin fish and the bait fish. And we've been trying to help manage um, and get some new um, initiatives with that so that we have bait fish for our offshore fish. Absolutely. And um, if you guys have been diving lately, uh, you'll notice that um, right now is the season for a little, little baby fish. Um, they're starting to get bigger and they're all over the shallow reefs right now. Um, and then also if you look up when you're diving, usually all the bait fish is circling around. So everybody has a purpose in the environment, in your ecosystem. So we have to make sure that we are not just looking at the big fish, like the prize fish, but also the bait fish as well. Because if you have a, you know, destabilization of them, uh, then you're not going to, you know, have a good healthy ecosystem. So. And I would um, encourage your divers to actually, I know that harvesting lionfish, a lot of people like to harvest them for, for meals, but get involved in the star competition harvest your lionfish, take pictures of them, su submit them through our app, and they can win some really cool prizes. That's awesome. Well, we do a lionfish and cleanup dive every month. So we just had a big derby in our Boynton Beach area. 
Um, we're going to do another one on August 6th. And actually, we're going to pair that with the opening season of lobsters. So oh you can do goodness. lobsters, lionfish, and clean up the reef all in one. And you can go and dive with us. Uh, we'll be here in Pompano Beach with uh, dive instructor Adam Nardelli. He's actually a graduate student who did his um, thesis on uh, lionfish. So he's a wealth of knowledge. And he actually did a Facebook Live. So if you want to see that, you can go to our um, YouTube channel and check out his Facebook Live. Um, all right. Well, I think that's it as far as questions. Um, let's go ahead and talk about really quick. This is the, I'm going to go ahead and solo this real quick. All right. So this is that uh, event we were talking about earlier when you tuned in. It's Tag the Tail Paint Night. So, um, we are kind of highlighting the Coastal Conservation Association of Florida um, by doing a paint night with uh, Stoked on Salt. That's going to be here in our Pompano store on Friday, um, 5.30, come and socialize, shop, and then 6 o'clock we will start um, doing our um, painting, and we'll have some pizza and some cold refreshments, and we'll have a lot of fun, and um, to keep the the paint night going i guess uh lisa wants to do a trivia quiz to see how much you learned after you've listened to the facebook live so if you need to re-watch our facebook live tonight <laughs> it lives on our facebook page or it's on our youtube channel <laughs> all right so we talked about um if you registered and we were gonna do a giveaway so here is the list of people let me go back out Here's the list of people who registered for tonight. So let's see who wins. Our Enriched Air Nitrox digital code goes to Eddie. Eddie McCormick. If you're watching, give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you are watching and you are going to get that digital code sent to you. So watch for an email from me. And guys, I'm feeling very generous. So let's go ahead and give away one paint night for this Friday spot. So let's see who wants to come to paint night. Kathy Archie. Kathy, if you're listening, give us a thumbs up. Woo All right. So I will get in touch with the winners from tonight. And uh, we'll make sure that um, we get your digital code and the paint night all set up so you can. Oh, Eddie's saying pay it forward. So Eddie says we can, uh, we can do another one. I guess, Eddie, you're already certified. <laughs> all right. Let's see. All right, Jenny, Jenny Willis, if you're watching, you are a winner. Woohoo! All right, so, oh, I guess I didn't have it up, but here's the winner. Hold on. Yep, there it is. Jenny, you're the winner. Yay, Jenny. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, thank you, Eddie, for paying it forward. Um, and everybody else, um, you know, we always have some great presentations, so make sure that you're on our newsletter and that you are tuning in. When you see that button says Facebook Live 4C, make sure you click that and watch us. Thank you so much for a great presentation. Thank you, for Nicole. having a wealth of knowledge about what's going on here, and your organization is amazing, and we look forward to doing more with you in the future. And uh, guys, let's go out and go diving. See ya. Bye.